Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the question is, how do we take all these logs, all these natural logs, and all these wonderful properties, and begin putting them to work? Our whole goal here is to actually solve equations. So, in fact, where I want to start is actually down here with number five. And number five, remember the whole reason we began this process was because we have an x in the exponent. With that, we can't solve this problem. I can't take the x root. But what I can do is I could rewrite it and say log base 5 of 2 equals x. And so now I have this thing right here. We say, ooh, so what? Well, you'll notice the variable is by itself. And with the variable by itself, then I can use my calculator to solve all the problems. So, if I come over here and I say log base 5 of 2, the problem is I don't have the base 5 button, so I'm going to have to use my change of base. So, log of 2 over log of 5. Again, if you so chose, change of base property allows you to say natural log of 2 over natural log of 5. Don't forget your end parenthesis. And the answer is 0 .43067. 0 .43067. Well, not too shabby. We can do that. Well, let's go up here to number 2. Number 2, we come up with this x here. But how do I get rid of a natural log? Well, I need to somehow do the inverse of a natural log. So let's rewrite this as log base e of x, because that's what natural log means. Remember, natural log equals log base e of 2. So now I can start rearranging things. So it means e to the second equals x. All right, e to the second equals x. Now. If I want to do that, I simply go to my calculator and I say second natural log, that's e, squared, enter, hit 7.34, basically, 7.39. Uh, x equals 7.39. And we've now just stumbled upon one of the very biggest things that we can do. If I want to undo an exponent, I use a log. If I want to undo a natural log, I need the reverse of that. The reverse of a natural log is the inverse natural log. And the inverse natural log is e. So we have e to the x is the inverse natural log. Inverse natural log. So if I can use that guy right here, I'm going to take the inverse natural log of both sides. As long as I do it to both sides, they remain even. Well, we know from our properties, we know from our properties that the inverse natural log of a natural log cancels out and we get x. So that's gone, that's gone, x equals e squared, which is 7.39. So again, using that inverse natural log is very helpful. Now, let's do a different type of solving. Let's go down here to number 4. If I have log of x plus log of 2, what I really have is log of x times 2, or 2 times x, equals log of 12. Now, just like I was able to get rid of the natural log, I'm able to get rid of a regular log. Well, what is the base of my regular log? It's base 10. So 10 to the x is the inverse log. But it's the inverse log base 10, not natural log. So I'm going to raise this to the 10th, take this to the 10th. Those go away, leaving 2x. These go away, leaving 12. So x equals 6. Now, another way to think about that is if I have log of something, equals log of something else, as long as the logs are by themselves, whatever's inside the log must be equal, and so it turns out, because I can remove the log from both sides using the inverse log, and I end up with 2x equals 12, so therefore x equals 6. Now, 
Let's go over here to number three. In this case, first things first, I can't deal with that log until I peel everything else away. So let's subtract five, subtract five. And so that's gone, that's gone. We have two log 3x equals eight. Now, of course, I have divide by two. Now I can divide by two because it's outside the log. That leaves me log 3x equals four. At this point, I have an x inside a log, so I'm going to need to actually do the inverse of the log. So I could either say 10 and 10 with 3x equals 10 to the fourth, or I could use the basis and say 10 raised to the fourth power equals 3x. Either way I choose to do it, whether it's by this thought method or this thought method or this thought method, it all works the same. So x equals 10,000 divided by 3. There we go. That brings us to the last type. And in a similar way as if I have log of something equals log of something else, if I have something raised to a power and something raised to a power, if I could get the bases to be the same by rewriting 16 as 4 squared, then I can really start to simplify some things down. Now, if I have power to a power, if I have x cubed to the fourth, I'm going to say x to the twelfth. I'm going to multiply those. That's the rule for exponents. Four to the two x plus six, because I give that two away to each piece, equals four raised to the four x plus seven. But if the bases are the same, that must mean the exponents are also the same. So 2x plus 6 equals 4x plus 7, and at this point I just simply begin to solve. x equals negative 1 half. There we go. So we have all sorts of things that we can do to start solving this. The last one is down here in the corner. I have 2 raised to this, 3 raised to this. Unfortunately, Unlike the 16 or the 4, I cannot change a 2 into a 3 or a 3 into a 2. So I can't think about it in terms of equal sides and going away. So what I need to do is I need to use the fact that I have a property that allows me to take a power and pull it down out front. Well, if I do that, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Now, I could take the log base 10, the log base 5, the log base 2. It doesn't make a difference. I just happen to choose natural log. And as long as I do the same thing to both sides, both sides stay equal. That allows me to take this, pull it out front. Take this, pull it out front. So I have x plus 1 in parentheses because it is a quantity times the natural log of 2. x minus 7 times the natural log of 3. At this point, you need to understand that the natural log of 2 is just a number. It is just a number, and I'm going to estimate it. So natural log 2, natural log 2, and that turns out to be 0.7. So that is approximately 0.7 times x plus 1 equals x minus 7 times natural log 3. That's 1.1. So now I'm going to give it away. So I'm going to say 0.7x plus 0.7 equals 1.1x minus 7.7. .7. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and subtract and reduce, get everything to one side. I get negative 0.4x equals negative 8.4 and so I divide both sides by divide both sides by negative 0.4 and you get x equals twenty one 
x equals 21. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll talk about this a bit more in class. I used an, a decimal estimate of natural log 2. I don't recommend that. I used a decimal estimate for natural log 3. I don't recommend that. I used these so that you would see that this is nothing but a numerical value. The only problem is by using these numerical estimates, I'm going to get a bunch of error, and as I move them around the problem, it's only going to be exacerbated. And so in this case, I get 21, but that may or may not be exactly the answer. We'll talk about how to do that more specifically in class. Okay, here's your homework for the exponential and logarithmic solving. So take your homework, get it done, turn in tomorrow.